Hello, welcome to JXJ Aviation. In this video, we will be looking at the landing distance and the factors that impact the landing distance of an aircraft. First, let's look at what is landing distance. The landing distance of an aircraft is the horizontal distance the aircraft travels from a specific point on its approach path to the point where it comes to a complete stop on the runway. Normally, the distance is measured from 50 feet above the runway threshold to the point where the aircraft stops completely. This is also called the actual landing distance. Actual landing distance, or ALD. The actual landing distance may vary with different conditions such as weight of the aircraft, runway surface condition, the wheel braking system, flap settings, deceleration systems, spoilers, reversers. When these factors are added to the actual landing distance, we get the required landing distance, or RLD. Let's look at the required landing distance in more detail. Required Landing Distance The required landing distance of an aircraft is the distance needed for an aircraft to safely land and come to a complete stop based on actual conditions or factors. Because of these factors and the inclusion of a safety margin, the RLD may be longer than the ALD. To understand how the different factors affect the landing distance, let's consider an aircraft, which is on the correct approach speed and glide path towards the runway. Weight of aircraft. A heavier aircraft means the approach speed will be higher to maintain the lift. More speed means the aircraft will take longer to decelerate to a complete stop from its approach speed. So the landing distance would increase. Runway condition. A smooth dry runway provides better traction so the brake efficiency increases. The landing distance would decrease. If the runway surface has water, snow or ice, the brake efficiency reduces, which will increase the landing distance. Braking system. The aircraft may have different braking modes installed that can be categorized as auto brakes and manual braking. The deceleration rate is highest with manual braking, so the distance is shortest with this braking mode. The flap settings. The aircraft may have different flap settings available for landing. In general, a higher flap setting means the flap deflection angle will be more and the approach speed reduces. So the landing distance decreases with an increase in the flap setting. Deceleration systems. The spoilers significantly reduce the landing distance. The spoilers are extended when the aircraft lands. This forces the aircraft weight on the wheels, so the brake efficiency increases, which increases the deceleration rate. When the thrust reversers are deployed, the landing distance decreases because it opposes the aircraft's forward motion. The reversers are helpful on wet or slippery runways because the brake efficiency reduces, but the reversers will be effective. Based on the actual aircraft and environmental conditions, the required landing distance is obtained. The RLD will also include a safety margin to ensure the aircraft stops on the runway. The total length of runway that is suitable for an airplane to land is called the landing distance available, or LDA. This distance does not include the stopway or the clearway, if available. 
The landing distance available must be more than the required landing distance. If the RLD is longer than the LDA, the aircraft will not be able to stop safely on the runway. That's all for my video on the landing distances. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please share and subscribe. And you can continue watching some of my other videos as well.